brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that shares your values. More information is available at CharityMobile.com. Francis has elevated a number of highly questionable prelates to senior positions in the Roman Curia recently, and elevated more questionable junior members of the Episcopate to their first positions as the local ordinary of their own dioceses. And many of them have something in common that a lot of people aren't really talking about. Statistically, too many of these men have direct ties to Ted McCarrick for it to be coincidental. Today, I'm going to give you the highlights of that because the sheer number of McCarrick's men who are getting promoted right now leaves me asking a rhetorical question. Is Ted McCarrick the de facto Pope? Because it sure seems like it. More likely, it must be asked. Is Ted McCarrick still exercising a large amount of power in Rome despite his awaiting his legal proceedings to continue in the state of Michigan? Let's talk about that now. But on a weirdly related note, let's revisit something I said Monday. Francis's weird antipathy towards traditional vestments and lace in the mass because it's kind of related to the question of Ted McCarrick and his influence in Rome. Francis's recent statements about priests needing to update their vestments and ditch the lace because apparently the council didn't want lace or something, although I don't know where he gets that, are the kinds of statements his biggest supporters could use to say, see, he's not really supporting Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit church. See, he's really against the German bishops working to get the church to accept sins that cry out to heaven for justice according to scripture. They are the kind of statements that, taken completely out of context, provide fertile ground for the mental gymnastics needed to keep the illusion going that Francis is really an orthodox pope, who is a staunch defender of the faith, who just frequently speaks sloppily or something. The reality of the situation is, of course, a little different. If you're not familiar with the story, I covered it Monday as part of a bigger question of what the consequences for the church will be if Traditionus Custodis is fully embraced by the bishops. But here's your biggest sign that Francis is not only endorsing Pastor Jimmy's program, he's not coming down on that group or the German bishops in any real way whatsoever. The Auxiliary Bishop of San Diego, Bishop John P. Dolan, was recently elevated and has become the new Bishop of Phoenix, or will shortly. He has such been named anyway. Dolan served under soon-to-be Cardinal McElroy, McElroy, and this move is a clear indication that Francis is coming down firmly on the McElroy, James Martin, Ted McCarrick side of those issues. Which begs the question I asked you just a moment ago. Is Ted McCarrick the one actually running the Catholic Church? Is he the de facto pope? Think about it this way. Where is Ted McCarrick? In September 2021, nine months ago, he had his day in court for his initial hearing, but Little to no movement has happened since then, at least against him. In favor of McCarrick, we've seen the Vatican promote a whole host of men cut from the same cloth as him, and especially his allies in the hierarchy. So is Ted McCarrick running the church at the moment? Let's take a look at the promotions for understanding the situation. We can start with McElroy himself. He's a longtime friend of Ted McCarrick, and he benefited directly from his personal friendship with the formal cardinal. As an auxiliary bishop, McElroy argued against the USCCB releasing records of McCarrick's work and the things he was charged with to the public and to investigators, which is a most curious response to things of this nature in the post-2003 Boston Globe reporting world, where the USCCB has the official policy of not tolerating activities of these kinds. They have a zero-tolerance policy. California Catholic Daily describes McElroy's work in this way, quote, Indeed, McElroy was one of the bishops who voted against a USCCB petition pressing the Vatican for more transparency and speed in the McCarrick investigation. I repeat, he voted against transparency, which marks him off as either someone who is A, personally compromised himself in the McCarrick situation and is who is seeking to cover it all up, B, uncaring towards those McCarrick harmed, or see a Pope Francis sycophant who simply is trying to shield the Pope from criticism, or D, all or some combination of the above, end quote. Again, that's McElroy. But it gets better. McElroy is a longtime proponent of the Pastor Jimmy Martin topic, meaning he is part of that in-group in Rome responsible for promoting those wicked sins that the Church has historically always stood against. And so was Ted McCarrick. McElroy's auxiliary bishop, Bishop Dolan, in 2021 signed on to a statement meant to protect the feelings of the James Martin crowd, which caused Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church to practically prance with glee. Religion News described it in this way, quote, The statement was signed by six bishops currently serving in active ministry. 
Cardinal Joseph Tobin of the Archdiocese of Newark, nighty night, right? Archbishop John Wester of the Archdiocese of Santa Fe, New Mexico, Bishop Robert McElroy of the Diocese of San Diego, Bishop Edward Weissenberger of the Diocese of Tucson, Arizona, Bishop John Stowe of the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, and Bishop Stephen Bagler of the Archdiocese of Cheyenne, Wyoming. A few hours after the statement was published, a representative from the Tyler Clementi Foundation confirmed that Bishop John P. Dolan, Auxiliary Bishop of San Diego, also signed on. Two retired bishops, Bishop Thomas Gumbleton, Diocese of Detroit, and Bishop Dennis Madden of the Archdiocese of Baltimore signed the document as well. The signers of the statement, for their part, directed part of their comments directly to the James Martin crowd, saying, know that God created you, God loves you, and God is on your side. End quote. God is on your side. Okay, then. The list of bishops is a who's who of Ted McCarrick friends and benefactors. An investigative reporter could write a book on their alliance with McCarrick and how they all benefited over the years. Virtually all of them tried to stop the USCCB from requesting the Vatican intervene in the McCarrick mess in 2018, including this man here, whom I have featured so many times on this channel that in the first couple of years of life on Return to Tradition, I joked that he was a friend of the channel. I had to stop telling that joke because people actually believe that Cardinal Supich was a friend of the channel. Anyway, obviously I'm talking about the Cardinal Archbishop of Chicago, Blaise Supich. To give you an idea how, how far down the rabbit hole with McCarrick, Cardinal Blaise Supich goes, we have this headline from 2018 in the Chicago Tribune. Cardinal Supich defends his record. Pope Francis in response to former Vatican official. This was the secular media reporting on Archbishop Vigano's first groundbreaking letter, which caused an earthquake in the church in the Western world. From that article, quote, Vigano's letter hinted at a wicked pact in alleging Supich secured his appointment as Chicago's archbishop, in large part because of Cardinal Theodore McCarrick, the former archbishop of Washington, who resigned last month. The letter was released to the National Catholic Register and other outlets and posted online. Supich was elevated to cardinal in 2016. Supich said he did not know anything about the allegations against McCarrick until moments before they were announced publicly. He said, it was stunning to me. My record in 20 years as a bishop will show that whenever I have information about anybody who misbehaves, I've always acted on it, Supich said. Supich, who said he heard about the letter Sunday morning after returning from Ireland, said he fully supports the Pope. I think the Pope has always acted in a way that is filled with integrity and honesty, and I continue to believe that, Supich said, end quote. And so here we have the Chicago Sun-Times reporting that Supich owed much of his career to McCarrick's influence. This explains why Supich was one of the leading voices against the USCCB requesting Rome intervene in the whole McCarrick mess. But intervene they did, but not in the way anybody really wanted them to. If you recall, the document issued by Francis a couple of years ago blamed McCarrick on Vigano himself and on John Paul II, as well as on Benedict XVI. Pretty much everyone else was responsible for Ted McCarrick except Francis, who had been sitting on the throne of Peter for five long years already by the time the McCarrick mess hit in 2018. The McCarrick dossier, as it was called in those days, could be more accurately described as the Vigano dossier or the John Paul II dossier, since Francis spent the entire document blaming figures in the church he clearly didn't care much for. Supich has since been elevated to a key position in the Roman Curia, where he'll be overseeing the FSSP, that's the Fraternal Society of St. Peter, as well as men and women religious orders dedicated to traditional Catholicism, all on the surface because he implemented Traditionis Custodis the way that Francis wanted, in the most draconian manner that canon law would permit. But what if there's another reason? McElroy and others are all close confidants of McCarrick. Does Uncle Ted still have some huge influence in Rome? That is the question for our time. The recent flurry of new cardinals and bishops getting promoted has pointed to a common theme that attentive observers have noted. The McCarrick's men are getting promoted, and that includes Dolan to Phoenix and McElroy to the College of Cardinals. None of this is a coincidence. But if I missed a promotion of one of McCarrick's men, let me know in the comments. I'm not infallible, and many of you are smarter than I am or more attentive than I am on a lot of these things. So what do you think about all this? Is there compelling evidence that McCarrick still has some rather large amount of influence in Rome, especially with Francis? Is he somehow pulling strings still? Are these promotions suspicious? Does Francis deserve some of the blame for the whole McCarrick mess? Or is Francis not deserving of this? I know that there are people who, believe it or not, honestly believe that McCarrick is a suffering saint, and that Francis is a luminous pope. 
Have you encountered people who are just that blatantly wrong about these things? And if so, how do you deal with them when you see them on social media? Let me know in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. And share these messages on social media because that helps a great deal as well. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.